Hello, welcome back to Very Spatial TV. I'm Jesse, and I've talked a little bit about QGIS in terms of installation, in terms of raster, uh, in terms of single band raster, uh, a little bit about vector, and this time I'm going to talk about multi band rasters. Now, whenever we're talking about multi band rasters, we're talking about data that is being stored in multiple bands. Um, more of a traditional three band approach gives us our true color, red, green, and blue. And whenever we're using these we're capturing the data generally in 8-bit formats. So we get 0 to 255 or 256 total values. Whenever we're uh, looking at this type of data, uh, it gives us our traditional true color. So whenever we look at it, in this case, in terms of a drone data uh, acquisition using a Mavic 2 Pro, um, using Agisoft's Metashape to create the data, uh, we can see that you know green is where we expect green to be, brown is where we expect brown to be. This won't be the case always with multiple bands of rasters. So whenever we zoom in real quick, we can see you know as we'd expect with drone data, very high resolution information. Um, from this, I also created uh, this this project. Also created uh, an elevation model. So we can see how that compares. Uh, that's, of course, used uh, by the software to create the ortho mosaic. And I've been doing this uh, fairly frequently, so we can actually see a more recent image. Uh, the, this original is from the 3rd of April 2020. This image that's adding now is from the 17th of April. So we can see in that two-week difference, uh, going from most of the construction of footers being up here on the northern end of this new construction and seeing new footers heading through the central and heading towards the southern portion of this new construction between these two existing buildings. We can also use something like the swipe tool. Now swipe tool is not built into QGIS, but it is freely available to uh, download as a plugin. Again, just going to plugins like we did last time, manage plugins, search for swipe, and you'll get access to the swipe tool. We can use it to compare images. Now you will notice that I have not gone through and georeferenced these data sets. Uh, if I were going to use them to uh, digitize or anything like that, I would, but right now I'm just using them for visualization. So you can see a little bit of an offset between the images at this point, but it does give you an idea how something as simple as the swipe tool helps you understand how construction uh, is continuing and uh, extending on this one project. Using something like traditional three band rasters is, is great and gives us access to a lot of information. But what about true multi band, where we have, uh, for, some, for instance, something like Landsat 8 data, where we have access to uh, 11 different bands, um, some of them thermal, of course, but still access to a lot of information? Here I'm going to grab bands 1 through 7, which give us. Uh, everything from uh, basically ultraviolet out through near infrared. I'm going to zoom to those. And each of these, of course, is nothing but a grayscale image that we can go through and look at. Now, the difference here between our true color we were seeing with what the drone was capturing, which was 8-bit eight uh, eight per band, so 256 values per band for three bands, giving, giving us... 16 point some million colors, which is all our monitors can show us. With Landsat, we're actually dealing with 16-bit data. So instead of having each band being 0 to 255, we have 0 to 65,535, or 65,536 values that we can play around with. Um, so we can get a lot more detail and get a better understanding of what's going on in these images from these higher spectral resolution platforms like Landsat 8 and, of course, the upcoming Landsat 9. Now, it doesn't do us a lot of good to see these as individual bands. Um, they're very good for research purposes, but really most of the time we want to be able to share information and look at information as a whole in our more traditional color values. So what we're going to do is go through and build a virtual raster, which is going to take each of these seven bands I'm going to select real quick, and it's going to use those seven bands to create a new image 
where we'll be able to um, go through and I'm going to take the defaults for the rest and interact with this virtual image as if it was a regular image, including being able to move around within the bands. So I'm going to go through and create a traditional color. Uh, red for Landsat 8 is uh, band 4, green is band 3, and blue is band 2. Whenever we click on that, we give us it gives us a very traditional um, sense of what we would expect in the summertime in eastern North Carolina. Very green colors that you see here. We can also use it to um, look at data that would be a little bit more useful for, say, looking at how healthy the vegetation is. So looking at a near-infrared image that gives us red for very healthy vegetation and uh, this white color gives us much more of that access to um, either rock, cement, bare earth type of situations. So we can see the urban areas kind of pop out in that whitish, bluish color, water in the very dark colors that you can see here because, of course, water doesn't reflect very strongly in the near infrared. Um, it scatters very heavily. And then we have the very green areas that are uh, either form, sorry, farms, forests, or in this case, swamps, uh, since we're getting closer to the coastal areas in North Carolina. So we can see a lot of different things. We can, of course, go through and do whatever we want to with that. We can also go through and save it as a traditional image. So we can save it as a GeoTIFF. Uh, we have other options, everything from um, JPEG 2000 and an AirDAS image, which I'm a big fan of, uh, the .img format for multiband images. And we can, you know, save this to be able to share with other people instead of forcing everybody to go through and um, combine the bands themselves. So if you're, you know, working with a group uh, or creating imagery to put online, that's what you want to be able to do. That is primarily what I wanted to talk about this time uh, in terms of multiband ra rasters. Uh, again, traditional true color images are very useful. Uh, we're seeing more and more data coming in rapidly from, of course, everything from uh, traditional aerial platforms, helicopters and planes, to, of course, more and more we're seeing drone data coming in in large batches. Um, we weren't looking at the individual tiles from the drone data capture. We were looking at a processed file, but you get the idea. One of the things that we really don't take enough advantage of, I think, is things like Landsat, Sentinel, uh, and other multiband, true multiband, or even hyperspectral data sets um, that we have access to for, uh, for free, really, um, by going to the USGS Earth Explorer. Uh, you can download lots of data from the US and uh, partner satellite countries. I think that's the best way of putting it. Um, for nothing more than signing up and registering for an account. So um, that's about it. That's what I wanted to highlight this time. Uh, there'll be one more video where I'll highlight uh, a little bit of Python and plugins again um, for processing before I move on to looking at the online mapping uh, open source options that people have uh, requested. Uh, I think Leaflet is, is uh, the one I'm going to start with, um, most likely based on what I've seen on uh, the YouTube, com YouTube comments. So uh, if you have anything that you would recommend for others or uh, anything I might have missed, be sure to leave that information down in the comments and uh, I'll talk to you in the next video.